as soon as you commit to any kind of artistic practice, you have to be ready for an element of being gorilla and taking things into your own hands. Expression is a gorilla tactic. We express ourselves to affect the world around us and what it means to us. I think in a sense we're all expression. There's something inside of all of us that needs to escape. An unheard voice. When you think about any kind of particular social unrest or political movement or change that affects the people, there's almost a sonic or a sound that goes hand in hand. If you think of the South African Revolution, of Sam Cooke and the Civil Rights Movement, of NWA and the police. In today's day and age, when we're going through so much political shift, so much cultural shift, so much integration, so much segregation, sound is more important than it's ever been. Music speaks to people. All right. I want to make a song for my generation. I recently found out that there was a Black Panther movement in the UK in the 1970s when I came across Gorilla. It's like a fictional series written by John Ridley. The themes of the show really spoke to me, so I teamed up with SBTV to do what I do best, make some music about it. John Ridley, there's a chap I like. I like that man. Screenwriter, director, general madman, genius. How are you? I'm good, I'm good, man. How are you? I'm not too bad. I want to know where the inspiration to even make Gorilla came from. The inspiration for Gorilla for me actually came from when I was a child okay. in America in the 1970s. A lot of the kinds of people that you see in Gorilla were very active. Power to the people. What was it that made you want to kind of come and say it here? And so there was a division in the Metropolitan Police Department that was set up to exclusively monitor and harass any person of color who spoke out in almost any way that they considered to be radical. And radical back in the day was just sort of standing up for yourself. They swing oppression like a club and they call it the law. From there, we just What I take from the series isn't isn't revolution. I think it's more about the idea of uplifting to the point of movement and action. What is it that you want, what well, I guess my generation to take away from the series? One thing, one thing, consequence. And consequence of action and also consequence of inaction. All change begins with some kind of disruption, some kind of emotional and personal revolution. And that feeling, that spirit, is something I really wanted to bring to Gorilla. You wanted me to do something. I did. I need to inspire the lyrics. So I think it's important I go and speak to the rest of the cast to find out exactly what mind state you have to get into to play these kind of characters. More and more as an actor, I love to look as close to home as possible when yeah. I'm starting to make a role. Uh, I kind of decided just to go straight to my parents. And when I showed them the photograph of myself mm -hmm. in full regalia, yeah. the first thing my dad said was, Vicky, which is my mum's name, <laughs> go and get your passport photo. And it looks just the same. It was real life. Yeah. It, the character was there in real life in front of me. From what I understand about the character, mm -hmm. deep love and passion for a culture that isn't necessarily native to him mm -hmm. came over. Actually, your description is more me. Mm -hmm. Marcus Hill, the character I play, he is what they call a patriot. So he was born here. But when you're black and British, there's a constant struggle to understand who you really are. You know, people should become more aware of their history, more aware of the struggle. You, you know, you've got to look back to look forwards. And for me, I think what I'm realizing more and more in life, and this is in relation to Gorilla, is that ideas hold power. Perception is power. I'm the one who gave you your voice. I wrote your book. No words on me, but on my life. Nothing but an English teacher living on a doll. Nobody paid you any mind. Someone like John, why he's a genius, mm -hmm. is that he creates this massive landscape where every character is humanized. You know what I mean? Yeah. And even the heroes are flawed and even the villains are humanized. So yeah. black or white, it's not like the white people are evil, the black people are good. There's it's no, yeah, there's no, there's no definitive color on evil. You've got a lot to ponder. Emotions. What emotions do you feel like, especially from a character like 
yours it what am i taking away what should i put into the record that is gonna give him a voice he's trying really hard to fit in to it but he doesn't know he's trying really hard to fit into it then the moment comes when you realize i realize it's a strong word when you wake up to the idea that no matter what you do, you will never belong. When you are trying to exist mm -hmm. in um, a society where you are not the dominant culture or the dominant race, mm -hmm. um, duality is something that becomes part of your day-to-day -day yeah. existence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you like a, I'm gonna give you freezing cold okay. and burning hot. Well, I'm ready. Yeah. Next. <laughs> I felt like the song needed some love. I wanted to see how a love affair, particularly an interracial love affair, would play out in that kind of climate. I was hoping to speak to Frida, but alas, life has a mysterious way of working itself out. someone on the outside because you're not used to seeing this the interracial couple mm -hmm. they're immediately curious yeah, enough why were yeah. these two yeah, why, exactly. why why yeah, why didn't yeah. she go out with an indian guy yeah. and why didn't he go out with a black woman especially when you consider the times when you consider the 70s mm -hmm. and how communities were under attack yeah. races were under attack so yeah. naturally you want to stick yeah. together just to feel like you're protected you know, with babu it was so easy because we had such amazing chemistry mm -hmm. and we we can sell it mm -hmm. easily because yeah. we believe in it yeah. Every time you hear the word black revolution, mm -hmm. you think it's about color of the skin, yeah. right? But really it is about political blackness. It, Asians were just naturally just a part of the black, the yeah. black struggle yeah. already. Yeah. That's one thing that I was really kind of like about was that it was, it's, it's a political story involving uh, an Asian woman as a lead. I can't but, think of any TV series yeah. or any movie even where you have a revolution, um, a radicalized revolution with an Indian woman. I'm not here to be the girlfriend or the sidekick. I am my own agent. We know you spent a lot of time speaking with Farouk Dondi. Um, how was that instrumental in, in developing the character? It was very important that I had, as an Asian woman, also had an Asian man to talk to who could talk about his, his, experience. his experience of political blackness. When you know that experience, you know of that experience, yeah. you've heard of that experience, yeah. it's very easy to relate to what our forefathers might have felt, mm -hmm. to what our parents might have felt, in this case what Jazz and Marcus would have mm -hmm. gone through. Yeah. My daughter knows she has a right to be British. She'll kill her, Savvy. Is that so hard for you to understand that some things are worth your life? One day I went to a club and they said, we don't want you here, you should go home. Those moments, short moments can change the Everything, destiny yeah. of your life. Yeah. On my way home, I decided I want to campaign against discrimination. Two weeks later, I was in Brixton and somebody gave me a leaflet and it was the Black Panther. They said, oh, what do you do? And I said, I'm a photographer. Well, now you're a photographer. I want you to just kind of talk me through some of these moments. This is Farouk. That's Farouk? Yes. And this was the Black Panther Movement bookshop. At the National Front decided to burn down the shop and the building. I opened the door to the staircase and the bloody fire was coming through. I knew that that was it. I opened the window and jumped out of the second floor window. We had a newspaper called Freedom News. We had an editor who couldn't read or write. Anyway, <laughs> I'm serious. No, this is absolutely sure. true. But he would... Um, he you would did edit? Yes, no, fine. And he pronounced words so we <laughs> that did not exist. We used and to... he was the central committee of the Politburo. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about the Black Power Desk. It was special branch. People, uh, of police officers, will come and say, Oh, I, I hate white people. They'll go and kill some. That's how they operate. It was no policing. 
And I was never not on bail for 10 years. And I have never committed a crime, ever. I felt like there was a portion of history that essentially happened on my doorstep and I was never privy to the information. I found out that there was a Black Panther movement in the UK when I started working on this project. I'd love to know a little bit more about that time. Some of us thought we were going to overthrow the state. By any means necessary. And it seemed necessary at the time. Yeah. It seemed that there was so much that, that the society wouldn't change without an act of violence. Yeah. Of course, they were the other section of the Black Panther movement that understood completely that picking up a gun and shooting somebody or killing a policeman here or there wouldn't get us anywhere. Anywhere. Yeah. Might get you in jail for the rest of your life. But the, the rest of the answer is that we used to run classes because we thought that young activists have to know what the history of the place that they are revolutionizing is. I came from the tendency of C.L.R. James, a revolutionary, a writer of the history of black people, because if you don't have a history, you don't exist. We are the children of the colonies who built this empire on the backs of their labor. It's only when we came to what we built, we were forced to question who we really are. I felt like the song needed an element of softening. Not too drastically, but a female vocal with power. Rebecca was the perfect choice. I couldn't be happier that she was involved with the project. Where are your parents from? Jamaica. Jamaica? My dad's Jamaican, my mum's English. He came over when he was eight oh. with my granddad. He was requested, you know, we need more steel workers. So my granddad came over, brought his kids, yeah. um, and then set off in Sheffield. It doesn't get spoken about, does it? That history. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. What would you like to bring to the record? Honesty, really. Yeah. It's got to be truthful, it's got to be heartfelt. I'm so glad you said honesty because yeah, there's, yeah. a, there's a truth that I can't uncover. Do you know what I mean, I can only tell my truth and I think yeah. if everybody just speaks their truth, I guess there'll be a, a lot more positive change in the world, hopefully. And I think it has to be applicable to everyone, not like just a certain demographic class or class, demographic yeah. religion. It has to, everyone's felt like they haven't fitted in. I think marrying the perspectives is probably going to be what sets it over mm -hmm. and what kind of like tips it into being like a really memorable record. I smell the building burning. I hear the cries and the angry cursive. I feel the hate and the feelings worsen. I carry scars of a thousand burdens. We're gonna look back in a thousand years and see that we couldn't stand for nothing. I'm on the right side of Garvey's vision, but I'm on the wrong side of nepotism. I tried to preach, but they wouldn't listen. Why does the truth sound like repetition? Why do they fear what they can't imprison? We're all a part of a sinful system who don't give a f about your skin condition. It's all a method of class division. It's all a method of class division. And we fight for scraps like some city pigeons. Uh, yeah. Look at all the misery. Look at all what's happening. Look at all the children. Look at all the children. In the skin, I don't feel right. Heavy chains, I'm criticized. Warring with their handless pride. World is lost, it don't feel right. Tell me why I have to hide. With a shame that isn't mine. They say I'm forbidden Down on my knees saying please Lord forgive them Cause they say I'm forbidden Down on my knees saying please Lord forgive them Cause oh, I'll have to fight And oh, I don't 
to feel the pain But if I don't speak then who might say How we wipe the smiles and paint the face Yeah, a call to arms, a fall from grace We walk the streets, we pave the ways Yeah, sleepless nights, they're all the same Yeah, at least that's what they used to say At least that's why you This mean more than a moment in the sun Icarus fell hard trying to reach for progression Now it's so hard watching another brother fall for the same thing Running or reaching for a weapon Ain't no hunger strike, stop my appetite I want freedom, like vanilla skies I want peace for those who chose to fight I might look within, find the reason why They say I'm They say I'm forbidden Down on my knees saying please Lord forgive them They say I'm forbidden Some say we're tragic, I say we're alive. You are the unwilling soldier of a revolution you've never heard of, living lives you don't believe in. We are the guerrilla warriors fighting for freedom against the rest of the world. We may never find freedom, but we fought, you followed. So no, I am not tragic. I am more alive than you will ever be. And even after I am dead, and you continue to breathe, I will still be alive. Thank you. 